I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. All is in readiness for the launch of Apollo 11 from Cape Kennedy. Mission Control at the Cape reports the countdown is proceeding on schedule. Astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins have suited up and ingressed the command module aboard this 363-foot-high Saturn Apollo configuration. Weather is satisfactory at the Cape. It is estimated that about one million tourists are now converging toward the beaches for the launch. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. communications was noisy but readable. Mission Control was able to hear the voices of the crew shortly after the tracking station at Madrid, Spain acquired the telemetry signals. Apollo 11 is getting its first view of uh, the landing approach. This the Apollo 11 lunar module Columbia Eagle has begun its descent crater. toward the surface of the moon. And, uh, the descent stage engine of the Eagle was fired at about 9 minutes at 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time. The engine burn time was less than 29 seconds. The engine firing places the lunar module into a slowly descending orbit. Meanwhile, astronaut Collins in the command module Columbia maintains a constant vigil on the descending lunar module. Communications have remained good with both Eagle and Columbia. The planned touchdown is for 3.17 p.m. in an area called landing site number two. 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down, straight shadow, four forward, four forward, drift into the right a little, ready, down and a half. The actual position of the spacecraft on the world map, and you can see Cape Canaveral has started fracking, and we will uh, start processing that data. Okay.
Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a deep end. Out of deep. Boat control, both auto, deep end, engine command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. while on the surface of the moon is being referred to now as Tranquility Base. Astronaut Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are preparing to step onto the lunar surface this evening. Preparations for the extravehicular activities are running a little behind schedule. A special display has been set up in the auditorium of Building 8 at the Goddard Space Flight Center during the flight of Apollo 11. A wide variety of displays includes models of the Apollo 11 command module and lunar module, an animated Apollo 11 mission profile, and information on the manned space flight network, the vital communications link required for the Apollo missions. Goddard employees are invited to bring their family and friends to see the display. Hours of the open house are from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. daily throughout the Apollo 11 mission. In addition, visitors may watch operations of the real-time computer center, NASCOM, and SCAMA through the viewing windows in Building 14. NASA brings together the scholars and scientists of our university, the research and technological skill of our great industry, the will of the people and focuses them on whatever job needs to be done. To our inside the lunar module, the LM or LEM. The ground is flown from a standing position, the LEM pilot to the right, the command pilot to the left. These are the commander's controls. His right hand is on the attitude controller regulating. Pitch and roll. Astronaut Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are preparing to step onto the lunar surface. Armstrong will leave the cabin first. TV viewers around the world will be able to see Armstrong be the first human to set foot on another celestial body. Goldstone Apollo. Uh, Goldstone got her voice. Would you maybe on that one for voice check, please? All right. Okay, I just checked. Uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that hasn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. Pretty good little jump. Uh, Buzz, this is Houston. F2, yeah, 1 one sixtieth second for shadow photography on the sequence camera. Okay. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. That's one small step for man. Leap for That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Surface is fine and powdery. I can I can pick it up loosely with my toe. It does adhere in fine layers. Uh, 
Johnny Circle, Greg, boys, that's right. I'm going to turn the to the console and inside my room. Roger, Honey Circle. How's your TV looking now? I only go in. Roger, and we're starting to get the first picture now. Thank you. I can see the footprints of my boots and the treads and the fine sandy particles. White House got her voice. White House. Oh, Roger White House got her voice. How do you hear me? You're loud and clear, sir. Home edge. Oh, you're loud and clear also. We'll be extending this circuit now into the Apollo net at Goddard for the presidential call to Tranquility Base. Roger. Thank you. Thank you. Got her voice out. The view of the camera from that. Let's get both of the view of the camera from that. Uh, Neil and Buzz, uh, the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you. Over. Honor. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, oh, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. Uh, I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you... For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure they too join with the Congress in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment, in the whole history of man, all the people on this earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done. And one in our prayers that you will return safely to earth. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States, but and of peace of all nations, and with interest and a curiosity, and, and with a vision for the future. Uh, honor for us to be able to participate here today. And thank you very much, and I look forward, all of us look forward to seeing you on the Hornet on Thursday. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, over. Two groups at the Goddard Space Flight Center are waiting for samples of the moon rocks that will be brought back by astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin. The scientists, headed up by Dr. Isidore Adler of the Theoretical Studies Branch and Dr. John Philpotts of the Planetology Branch, will be among some 140 experimenters from the United States and foreign countries to receive the samples after they have gone through quarantine and prepared for distribution by the Lunar Receiving Laboratory of the Houston Manned Spacecraft Center. The samples out here, the hard rock samples, have what appear to be vesicles in the surface. Also, I'm looking at one now that appears to have some sort of phenocrys. Hey, Neil, didn't I say we might see some purple rocks? Find the purple rock? Yep. At approximately 11.53 p.m. Central Daylight Time tonight, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin began preparations to re-enter the lunar module. The Eagle lifted off the surface of the moon at 12.54 p.m. Central Daylight Time today. Apollo 11 is on the way home. Apollo 11 is streaking toward a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. The speed will rapidly increase to a maximum of about 24,800 miles per hour. 
400,000 feet above the Earth, the spacecraft will begin to encounter the atmosphere. At that point, the heat shield will begin to heat up. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Brown speaking from the flight deck of Qantas 596. It does seem that we're going to get a very good view of Apollo 11. This, oh, I think, here they come, on the left side, two of them, one object brighter than the other. See the two of them, one above the other, brightest one lowest, one's the command module, one's the service module. They each weigh six tons. They're just picking up heat now. The bottom one's leaving an incandescent trail. Do you see it flashing? That's a trail of epoxy uh, ablative uh, resin coating. See it brightening up? What a spectacle. It's passing a Bemis now at nearly 300 miles. There it goes. The Apollo 11 with astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, and Michael Collins has splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. The historic voyage to the moon and back ended at 11.50 a.m. Central Daylight Time. The landing took place at a point about 900 miles southwest of Hawaii. As the spacecraft re-entered the atmosphere, one of the recovery planes sighted the spacecraft glowing in the early morning sky. Shortly before splash down, another of the instrumented aircraft spotted Apollo 11. Then the spacecraft was spotted briefly behind the clouds by those on the recovery ship Hornet. At 11.45, the Apollo 11 crew reported that the chutes had deployed. At 11.48, the Hornet reported visual sighting then the Apollo 11 itself reported. Apollo 11, Apollo 11, this is Hornet, Hornet, over. Apollo 11, this is Apollo 11, reading the loud and clear. Our position 1330, 6915. Helicopters immediately began to hover over the Apollo 11, and then the swimmers dropped into the water for the recovery. Hornet, guttered voice by ATS. So Hornet, go ahead. Uh, Roger, you're loud and clear, how do you read me? Copy you loud and clear. Uh, Roger, we're going to be monitoring this circuit uh, for the recovery uh, sequence. Uh, we'll also be extending this circuit onto the White House. Uh, Roger, understand. White House, got her voice. Oh, White House. Uh, Roger, how do you hear me? You're loud and clear. Uh, Roger, you're loud and clear also. We'll be extending this circuit into the Apollo and Eddie Goddard. Thank you very much. and waving to the astronauts. The curtains have been drawn. And there they are in the rear, rear window. The president signaling for applause from the crowd. The astronauts gather in the window. Neil, Buzz, and Mike, I want you to know that I think I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I say this not only because I have the honor to be President of the United States, but particularly because I have the privilege of uh, speaking for so many and welcoming you back to Earth. Uh, I can tell you about all the messages we've received in Washington. Over 100 foreign governments, emperors and presidents and prime ministers and kings have sent the most warm messages that we've ever received. They represent over two billion people on this earth, all of them who have had the opportunity through television to see what you have done. All this we pray as our thanksgiving rings out to thee in the name of our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs>